Alright, welcome guys. So Legends Reborn had a big update. They had an AMA this morning. So this is just a quick recap of some of the big changes. There's about three to five big changes. So we'll start off with the gameplay. We've got single digit changes, new hero, and a couple of things will nerf. So let's just have a look at what those changes look like. So you can see they've decided to go with single digits instead of the double digits that they used to have. So all your energy costs, all your health, and it drag attack cost, and mana, oh sorry, magic damage, is going to be single digits. Now this is to be more in line with what other CCGs have, so it's more familiar to players when they come over. And it's also kind of just easier to get your head around when you first start. I think it may also be easier to balance things, although when they've initially changed this, it has created some imbalances, so they've had to nerf uh, Poison and a few other creatures. So the Wisp, they might change. Uh, Dark Tree. Dark Tree is now only giving energy starting the second turn. And they're probably going to tweak some of the energy giving cards. So Energy Drain or Energy Bleed, I think it's called. And Adrenaline, which makes your attacks cost less energy. Now you can also see in the bottom left, they've got the Bard, which is this new hero. I haven't seen what he actually does yet, but he, he looks super cool. He's got good animations and I'm hoping he's got some cool abilities. So actually, let's have a look and see if we can catch one of his hero cards. Yeah, so he's pulling a hero card now. I think we missed this before. Yeah, so it's granting team fortune and regen, which I'm not sure what re we know what regen does. Fortune, okay, it looks like fortune's probably... Yeah, you gain an extra card when you attack by the looks of it. Yeah, so if you look at a drag attack there, he's generating two cards. Okay, so that's what fortune does. So that's pretty good. Regen, which I think they're changing. They might buff it or they're doing, doing some change with regen and the extra card on drag attack, which is really good, especially given the changes where your creatures can only generate one card per turn on the drag attack. So I think these are good changes. The single digits are a little bit... Uh, I guess controversial with some of the players that have been playing for a while. I suppose any big changes like that is always going to feel bad. Um, and it's arguable whether it makes it less tactical or more tactical. Um, but overall, I think it's a positive change. I think it's most important to make it comfortable for a new user to come in. And I think in the long run, as long as we get the balances under wraps, I think it doesn't take away anything from tactics. Um, and they can tweak things around it anyway, so... Alright, so that were the bulk of the gameplay changes. We talked about the nerfs and the new hero. Now let's talk about the user experience. So they're now allowing pre-made decks again. So that's going to be good for your first user experience when they come in. Sometimes making a deck isn't the easiest thing to do, especially when you don't understand the game yet. And they've also introduced a kind of mini tutorial. So your first game, it's not a full tutorial, but your first game, it'll teach you how to drag attack and it'll just run you through a game before you make a deck. It'll just kind of get you used to the game. It's not going to give you a full rundown of every mechanic in the game, but it'll definitely help that first user experience. They now allow friend versus friend, so you can now go to a practice with friends option, and you can either search for someone or give you the room code link to a friend, and you guys can play each other. So again, this is going to be really good for first user experience. You can invite your friends and play them without losing any MMR or feeling like you're going further down the leaderboard, for example. They've also added law, so you can look at uh, a week, I think it's a weekly update with law regarding the heroes, and they've also integrated a little bit more of that law into the game, which is nice. So between the pre-made decks, the mini tutorial, and the friend versus friend, I think the first user experience is a lot better. Um, and the single digit changes also add to that, I think. All right, the final big announcement they made was they're going to be playing the next playtest um, on Steam as well as Gala. So Steam players will be able to play. They'll have kind of a separate account. So if you're a Gala player and you're playing on Steam, it'll be a fresh account, but you will be able to play against Gala and Steam players. So when you queue up, you could be playing a Steam player or a Gala player. Steam players obviously won't have access to NFTs, but they could be playing a player with NFTs. So that person with the NFTs might have access to other creatures outside of the free uh, rotation for that week. But as long as they get the balance changes correct, I don't think this is going to have any effect on the player with just using the free rotation's ability to win. I don't personally own any NFTs. And as long as, you know, outside of the, the Dark Tree and the Poison that were heavily unbalanced, it didn't didn't really affect the the gameplay experience. I was happy to play with just the free rotation. They have enough creatures in the free rotation where it's not so much of an advantage to have an NFT. 
which allows you to play a creature outside of the free rotation. But we'll see. We'll see if the Steam players uh, care about this. I know with Superior, the Steam players really liked. Superior Superior was also on Steam, um, if you didn't already know. They liked the game. Um, they didn't so much like the NFTs, even though it didn't affect them at all. So we'll see the reaction. Um, I think we'll get good feedback anyway, regardless of whether they um, talk negatively about the NFTs or not. Now they said if this Steam playtest goes well in terms of desyncs and connection issues, they'll just go straight to early access, which is super good. So the Steam playtest will be at the end of this month, I think, and the early access shouldn't be too far after that if all goes well. Now they do have a new Discord. So if you haven't already joined the Legends Reborn Discord, and if you're someone from Galar, be nice to any Steam players that come on and don't get into too many arguments. Um, but join that one and join the, uh, or well, look out for the link to the Steam to add yourself to the wish list just to help with the algorithm on Steam. And yeah, make sure to participate in the next playtest. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that, make sure to subscribe if you already haven't and like and throw a comment on what you think about these changes. And let me know how you think the Steam players are going to receive the game. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.